Emma is a child who was diagnosed with B cell precursor ALL in 2011. Initially, a clinician started chemotherapy and it seemed like she was becoming cancer free. However, in 2011, the cancer reoccurred and in 2012, she relapsed. The situation became more and more desperate as she became critically ill. Her type of cancer was very aggressive and proliferative. Therefore, scientists at the University of Pennsylvania decided something risky. Emma should be the first person to receive a new form of therapy, a CAR T cell therapy. After some days, she became healthy again, and to this day, she is cancer free. My name is Kevin Steinig, and today we talk about the CAR T cell revolution, a new form of immunotherapy. But before we start, I recommend you watch the first part of the series in order to be able to keep up with this video. But briefly, last time we talked about immunotherapy, a new way of treating cancer. Immunotherapy is based on a reactivation of immune cells in order to selectively kill tumor cells. And there are five different classes of immunotherapy. Last time we talked about immunostimulation and check one inhibitors. While immunostimulation uses molecules such as cytokines in order to locally provoke immune responses, Checkpoint inhibitors disable the acquired function of cancer cells to shut down the immune system. Besides these two forms of immunotherapy, we also know bispecific T cell engagers, vaccination and CAR T cells. And in this episode, we will talk about CAR T cells as they are highly remarkable and deserve their own episode. Last time we've mentioned that T cells selectively target cells which have acquired mutations and might otherwise become tumor cells. Okay, so let's take a closer look at that. Cytotoxic T cells in our body interact with neighboring cells using different receptors in order to check their health and their status. In this regard, the most important receptor on the T cell is the T cell receptor. The T cell receptor interacts with MHC class 1 molecules and bound peptides. Nearly every cell in our body produces MHC class 1 molecules and binds a lot of different peptides to them in order to show that they are healthy. However, if a cell is infected by a virus, it undergoes certain changes and starts to exhibit unique peptides on their MHC molecules. Cytotoxic T cells now recognize these unique peptides and start to kill a cell. Comparable to viral infected cells, cells which might become tumor cells also exhibit weird peptides on their MHC molecules. In cancer patients, tumor cells are often not recognized by the immune system or the immune system is not able to tackle the tumor. In these cases, we can use CAR T cells. Okay, so what are CAR T cells? Oh, not that. CAR T cells or chimeric antigen T cells are T cells which are modified by scientists in a laboratory in order to recognize tumor cells. To produce CAR T cells, we isolate T cells from the cancer patient and change them in order, for example, to recognize fetooncopeptides. Fetooncopeptides are expressed in the early development and therefore we would not expect to see them in adults. However, tumor cells sometimes exhibit fetooncopeptides. We can also target peptides which are overexpressed or mutated in several cancer forms. In all of these cases, CAR T cells would mostly not act on healthy cells, but only on cancer cells in the patient. The chimeric antigen receptor is the key component of the CAR T cell. It consists of an extracellular antibody fragment which binds to the tumor. Compared to normal T cells, which only recognize short peptides bound to MHC molecules, we can potentially bind any protein we would like using CAR T cells. Chimeric antigen receptors further comprise intracellular co-stimulation and activation domains. As we've discussed in our last episodes, T cells require complex interactions with body cells in order to be activated. In CAR T cells, however, the co-stimulation and activation domains on the chimeric antigen receptor mediates the action of the CAR T cell. This means that CAR T cells do not need any complex interactions with cancer cells, but only the binding of chimeric antigen receptors in order to be activated and kill the cancer cell. This might sound a bit complicated, but it means that we can potentially use different chimeric antigen receptors to cure all kinds of different cancer types. So after we've identified a cancer peptide, we isolate T cells from the patient in a process called apheresis. Afterwards, we insert our chimeric antigen receptor and then we let the cells divide. And then we introduce the CAR T cells into the body of the patient and now they can start killing cancer cells. What is quite remarkable is that CAR T cells often undergo cell division after they've been reintroduced into the patient. And this means that it can act longer compared to other therapies. But how effective are CAR T cells? 
In 2014, CAR T cells were used to treat 30 children which were diagnosed with ALL, a form of leukemia. Here, CAR T cells were designed to recognize CD19, which is abundant in B cells. Since in this type of cancer, cancer cells are B cells which abundantly express CD19, the treatment was very effective. In this study, over 90% of patients showed complete remission. And to give you some context, normally only 25% of patients show complete remission using different other drugs. Moreover, half of the patients did not need any further treatment in the following months. In another study, CAR T cells were also used to treat ALL patients. Here, over 88% showed a complete response compared to only 30% which have undergone chemotherapy. As a consequence, quite a few different CAR T cell therapies have been approved in a very short time frame. To conclude, CAR T cells can now be used to commercially treat different types of cancer, right? Well, not quite. CAR T cells need to be further evaluated as they can cause severe side effects such as the cytokine release syndrome. You see, after CAR T cells have been reintroduced in the body of the patient, they release cytokines, which have normally different functions in inflammation and infection. If too many cytokines are released, more and more immune cells get activated and immune toxicity occurs. The patient might now experience different symptoms such as headache, incontinence, tremor, but also cerebral hemorrhage, which is fatal. Therefore, we need to improve the procedure in order to make it safer. Another important point are costs. CAR T cells are a great example of personalized medicine as they are tailored for each patient and are therefore very effective. However, this makes the treatments very expensive. According to pharmaceutical technology, treatments in the United States cost up to $475,000 and in the EU up to $365,000. But we might be able to decrease this cost by refining the generation of CAR T cells. CAR T cells are truly revolutionary in the concept and clinical studies are very promising. However, a lot of research needs to be conducted in order to establish CAR T cells as a commercially available treatment for cancer. If you're interested in these or similar topics, let me know in the comment section and leave a like. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button in order to stay informed about the greatest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya.